Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here and welcome to Final Fantasy Bestiary. This series is dedicated towards discovering the history and lore behind Final Fantasy's most iconic creatures and characters. Today, we shall take a closer look at one of Final Fantasy's most prominent dragons, Tiamat. While some of you are likely familiar with Tiamat in the Final Fantasy series, Tiamat does have a brief background in Babylonian myths. Serving as both a sea goddess and the embodiment of primordial chaos, Tiamat eventually mated with the god of fresh water, Abju, and birthed younger Babylonian gods before being split in two by one of those gods named Marduk. Her remains were then used to create the heaven and the earth. Oddly enough, there is no indication that her mythological body was in any way related to dragons, although she did at some point give birth to dragons and serpents, among other sea creatures though that were completely unrelated. In modern times though, she is depicted as being a multi-headed dragon due to her appearance in Dungeons and Dragons in the 1970s. In Final Fantasy, Tiamat does act as a dragon, consistently appearing as one of the harder bosses in the games across the series. She is mostly depicted as that multi-headed dragon as she was in Dungeons and Dragons, though some appearances give her more of an appearance of a general worm. Regardless of her appearance, Tiamat has been a long-running boss in the series, which we shall cover now. First up is the game that the dragon first appeared in, Final Fantasy 1. I've actually briefly spoken about Tiamat back in my bestiary focus on the Four Fiends, a series of bosses common in the Final Fantasy titles. Of the first group of the Four Fiends, Tiamat is considered the strongest of them, being the last of the four you encounter late in the game. In the remakes of Final Fantasy 1, Tiamat is also the final boss required in order to open the optional dungeon Whisperwind Coves, where several other Final Fantasy bosses, such as Ultros, appear. While not a member of the Four Fiends anymore, Tiamat does appear in Final Fantasy 2 as an optional boss. As the player is traversing through Pandemonium at the end of the game, there are a number of optional chests containing some of the strongest armor in the game. Guarding the Genji Helm is none other than Tiamat. She is one of the easier bosses at this point in the game, but she does still cast high level magic, absorb elemental spells, and deal crushing physical damage. Next, she appeared in the sequel to Final Fantasy IV, The After Years. This appearance is due to the inclusion of the original members of the Four Fiends, who all make their appearances in this game as well. Once again, she is the strongest of the four, and even appears using her original model from Final Fantasy I. Similar to the behemoths of Final Fantasy IV, the original one, using magic on her may cause her to counter with Maelstrom, an attack that reduces the party's current HP to about 1%. Tiamat would be withheld from the series for several games, not appearing in 5, 6, or 7. However, she would become one of the final optional bosses in Final Fantasy VIII. She is one of the many fiends under Ultimecia's command in her castle that must be defeated in order to unlock the power of the heroes. She is a reskinned Bahamut in this game and fights similarly to him, doing a countdown attack before finally casting Dark Flare, an improved version of Mega Flare. This makes sense within Final Fantasy VIII, as Tiamat is actually a former Guardian Force who was turned evil by Ultimecia at some point in time, so there is likely some unknown relation between her and Bahamut. As a reskinned Bahamut though, she is not a multi-headed dragon in this title. She even has the Guardian Force Eden, who can be drawn from Tiamat and is capable of breaking the 9999 damage limit. Tiamat moved on to appear in the next title, Final Fantasy IX, where she would be encountered as both a boss and a reskinned common enemy towards the end of the game. She is encountered multiple times on the third disc before being defeated in Memoria as the second Guardian of Terra. She uses a powerful combination of wind attacks, status reductions, and even as Typhon's snort ability if you attack her while you have the float buff. There is also a crystal version of her in the crystal world that is significantly weaker. Skipping Final Fantasy X, which boggles me because I could have sworn Tiamat was one of the optional bosses in the monster arena, but she's not, Tiamat would become a popular boss in the MMO Final Fantasy XI. Once one of the strongest monsters in the game, Tiamat's strength was regarded equivalent to that of a level 95 boss, while the game's level cap was only 75. For this reason, it required great planning and patience to take her on, including lots of fire resist gear, parties that could handle the fire elementals and bomb adds nearby, and lots of damage. The reward from her was a simple pair of boots, but they were highly coveted for their ability to increase a mage's movement speed. 
Living in the Adawa Chasm, Tiamat was one of the seven children of Bahamut, the Worm King. She was summoned to the planet when Bahamut wished to prevent the resurrection of Promethea, to end the world as it was. She could only spawn once every three to five days, having a spawn window every 30 minutes for 48 hours, but only after 72 hours had passed from the previous death. She could also be summoned directly by Bahamut to fight alongside him in the endgame battle dubbed Bahamut 2.0. Despite being defeated multiple times, her role in the story also remains the same. She is also perpetually hunted by a group known as the Shikari Sisters. Next up would be Tiamat's appearance as a boss in Final Fantasy XII. She appears here as a boss summoned by Fran's sister, Mjern, who was driven mad from exposure to the mist. In the game's lore, she is regarded as powerful enough to destroy anything in her path and lead the world to new ruin. Despite this description, the boss fight happens in the mid to early portion of the game, with Tiamat only being about a level 25 ringworm. It's possible that Mirren's reawakening of Tiamat did not fully realize her power, as several other dragons and ringworms in the game far surpass her strength. She would go on to be a summon in the sequel to Final Fantasy XII, Revenant Wings. In Final Fantasy XIII, Tiamat herself would not make an appearance. However, one of Orphan's subjects known as the Tiamat Eliminator would. It is implied by the name that this boss was designed to destroy Tiamat as opposed to it being similar to something like Tiamat the Eliminator. It's interesting because there are other bosses in the game that take summon names and then add something like Interceptor, the example off the top of my head being Garuda Interceptor. So I'm curious to see what actual correlation it has, but at least Tiamat's name is used in this one. Now, of course, you guys know I'm a big Final Fantasy XIV fan, and Tiamat has actually not made an appearance in A Realm Reborn. A lot of people thought the multi-headed Hydra would become this game's Tiamat, but it seems that she is primed to appear as one of Midgard Sommer's seven children, one of the seven great worms. However, we know nothing about her yet, so all we can do is wait to find out more. Tiamat did make an appearance in the off-titles of the series, as I usually include here right at the end, Tactics and Tactics Advance both saw her as an enemy, and her Final Fantasy 1 sprite and artwork were used in various other mobile titles in the series. However, Tiamat is one of the few characters I've talked about in my Best Jerry series that's never really had a moment of weakness. Even in Final Fantasy 12, where it was only a low-level boss, she still had an epic backstory that gives her appearance some real weight in the world. It'll be interesting seeing her make an appearance in Final Fantasy 14. And I'm curious if she'll appear in Final Fantasy XV as well. Thank you for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share for more Final Fantasy and Final Fantasy XIV related news, updates, guides, bestiaries, of course. And if you're looking for more bestiaries to watch, you can check the little exclamation mark in the top right of the video that should take you over to a playlist with all the other bestiaries. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Until then, take care.